Google launched Notebook LLM quite a while back. I have been using this for very many things and I feel like this is one of the best kept secret that not a lot of people know about because we all are using ChatGPT and Claude and all these other LLMs but this one touts to be your own personal research assistant. And why is that so? Well, we have other LLMs but this one is going to be an aggregate for your sources and it's going to make sense of all of that and it will give you a summary of things as you can see here and I'm going to have the description I'm going to have the link to this in the description down below so you can actually go and check it out for yourself um, this also is completely free of cost if you have a Google account you can just uh, go in and try it for yourself uh, you can also read this article in its entirety the most important thing which people usually have um, gripes about with when it comes to AI and so they claim to say here is that your personal data is not used to train Notebook LLM. So that is very interesting. And you can see it's also been mentioned in quite many very uh, publications. So we're going to try this firsthand and we're going to go to try Notebook LLM. Right off the get go, you're going to see um, the Notebook LLM opens up into this wonderful page. On the top, you'll see it's known as experiment. So it's an experimental uh, product, kind of like a beta. And then you're going to see that you'll have upload your documents in notebook LLM will answer detailed questions or surface key insights. So we'll get into that. But first, let's look into one of the examples that's already been made. So when you first time come into this um, notebook LLM, this is what you're going to be introduced with. So we're going to go into the inventions of the light bulb. What do I mean by sources? So you see right over here on the top corner over there, the sources in the case of this one is locked, but they have specific sources through which this specific model is able to generate questions and answers and summarizations. So they have given us here. Now, that is all nice and said. Now we're going to actually do one for ourselves and we're going to see what is actually all that about. The minute you click on create, you can't actually do anything if you don't add sources. The core essence of the notebook LLM is that you need to add your own sources. As I've also mentioned earlier, it's an aggregate of all your own sources. And you can see right on the bottom here that it's up to 50 sources. So it could be a Google Doc. It could be a Google Slide. It could be a website link. It could be a YouTube link. That is something which is a very, very nice thing because some LLMs have an issue with reading into YouTube. So here you can also, let's say, do a summarization of a YouTube link. Just food for thought, I'm saying. And then you can also paste text. You can also do PDFs, text, markdowns and audios. So I have a couple of uh, PDFs that I have ready for this, which is for the topic of quantum computing. I have nothing to do with quantum computing. So let's see how this LLM is going to help me understand it in as summarized possible. And that is the challenge here. So you can see directly that the minute I added it, the sources automatically are adding itself one by one. And then when we click again, you should notice right in the bottom, now it's no more 0 of 50, it is 5 of 50. So I've already utilized 5 of those sources. I'm actually also going to be adding another source here, which is going to be our YouTube link. So I'm going to go right over here on the YouTube, and I'm going to add that over there, insert. Now, sometimes this could also be an issue. You can see that the video cannot be imported because the transcripts are not available. So that could also happen. So in that case, what we do is we just remove the source and then you just delete it. But sometimes you can get it. So you need to make sure that you have a transcript available. From this sources that we have over here, you can already see that I have a summary right in the bottom. The summary is uh, saying that the text provides uh, explores various aspects of quantum computing. The first text, BTEC Project PDF, discusses the applications of quantum st states, focusing on their potentials for teleportations, etc., etc. You can see it. Now, they also give us some subtle prompts like help me create FAQs, study guides, table of contents, timeline, and a briefing doc. Also, it's giving us like a um, suggested questions. And then, 
like a chat GPT now with these five sources you can actually have like a chat so before and then it also has an audio overview and I'm going to dive into that in a little bit that's that's I feel like the most interesting and in my opinion it's I have used it and I'm going to get into that but okay let's just say now how this will be used like a chat GPT as a own personal chat GPT now you're going to see this will again as I've mentioned it before you know it's not going to be showing information from anywhere else it will only show information that it has been citing and giving references. So if you click on it, it's actually giving us a source guide and it's giving us exactly where it's come from. So imagine you have a coin. It goes heads and tails. There is a bit of an information. So here's the thing. I'm going to you can you can pause the video here and you can read the summarization so you can see what it's, it's about. It's like magic, but it's science. So and then you can save it to a note. So now this part is where you are like a chat GPT and then you can say condense this summary and then it's going to do exactly like how you would have other LLMs but pertaining to my sources and they're also giving us the in-text citations based on where it's coming from. So it's saying the Mosca PDF, the Mos Mosca PDF is mentioned over there. Then over here it's going to mention uh, the Palical rifle intro to QC PDF that's also mentioned over here so you can see and then here instead of condensing it actually expanded it a bit more but you get the idea and then it's also giving us more questions that we can ask after the fact so some of the other LLMs they do that so you have like what is a polynomial versus a super polynomial dichotomy etc etc so okay we're going to close the chat and if you want to again go back anytime you want to get back to the chat or not to the chat you always do view chat and close chat so it's kind of like a dashboard that just like opens up and you have nothing else here but now let's say i wanted to add this specific thing to the note so i'm going to save to note and you see already something is already saved from my chat even before i use the notebook guide so that's just amazing. So now we have this and it's already also saying that you have the in-text citations from your own sources. So if anybody's doing like a college program or something, again, do make sure because these are LLMs, always ensure to do your own reading and own fact checks and corrections. But that is that said, the citations and everything that really does help because other LLMs are not as helpful in that regard. In any case, now let's look at the other things. So this was from the chat. We got a saved response. Then it's going to create an FAQ. It does an FAQ over there. It's generating an FAQ. Then it's going to make a study guide. And then it's going to be a table of contents. And it's going to be a timeline. And we're going to have a briefing doc. As you can see, these are happening all in live. So all of these are being generated as is so you can see the FAQ is already been made with a plethora of things you can see here they're giving us a bunch of different like frequently asked this is a briefing document so it's giving us all the briefings from all the different PDFs that I have mentioned over here and it's giving us all the different uh, variables and everything quantum algorithms quantum complexities and everything then it's also giving us a computing study guide with answer keys so it's giving us some essay questions it's giving us glossary key terms even if uh, it's super complicated you can always find an easier answer like say for example for me this would be something that i would still think about i'm like huh okay imagine you are like a coin it can head and tails but this information there, there's a bit more information now you can imagine a special coin that has both heads and tails at the same time that's quibit and etc etc so it's like you have important academic information also you can have information that you can get from the chats that's not where the fun just ends remember i spoke about audio overview so i don't know if you've seen this going around but these audio overviews are text only and they're basically what they do is they're overviews of lively deep dive discussions that summarize key topics from your sources so every source that we have it's going to be kind of like an eerie podcast that you're going to hear between two people who are going to talk about the sources in a way that would feel interactive. So not only do you have text for text-based learners, you also have audio kind of a podcast. So if you want to make like a lecture notes into a podcast that you can listen for later, this is a huge thing. I have been using this myself for different kinds of research and different kinds of things, even on YouTube space. And it's been so beneficial because I am able to kind of create my own 
crunch of a podcast. So the time of this, you can see, it does depend how long it can take to generate it. And also the length of the audio is going to be variable. In some instances, I've seen seven minutes, six minutes, and in some instances, 15 minutes. And before I'm going to play this, you can also see there are a couple of options. So you have a playback option, kind of like YouTube. So you can go up to 2x and you can also download this if you want to use this for other places. So here is what it's going to sound like. And because we have his untitled notebook, it's going to be automatically named as untitled notebook. And I'm just going to uh, play the initial part of it. Let's just hear a few couple of minutes of this. All right, strap in everyone because today we are diving headfirst into the quantum realm. Diving in. Yeah, quantum computing to be exact. It's a deep one. It really is. And we've got a really interesting mix of sources to go over today. I do. Everything from straight up academic papers to a student's B-Tech project, which I think really shows how broad this field is. Yeah, you know, it's amazing to see this kind of crossover from the theoretical to practical applications. Mm. And it really speaks to how fast quantum computing is evolving. It really does. And how much it's capturing people's imaginations. Absolutely. So for anyone listening who maybe hasn't had the chance to really dive into this world yet. You get the idea. It feels like two people are having a podcast conversation. And in fact, if you picked it up, I don't know if you picked it up, but there was a little bit of an interruption in between each other. So that is something... A couple of days back, I did a video about how human-like the chat GPT's voice is. This one, when I first heard it myself with my own little practices, I literally felt as if it was just two people, like voice actors, doing this. It sounded so good. It's basically the same two voices. So every time you're doing any kind of sources, it's going to be the same two voices. But the idea is always going to be the same. That uh, And if you add new sources, again, a disclaimer, if you add new sources you're going to have to make a new overview. So do keep that in mind. So if you wanted to download the previous one, you should just go ahead and download that. And you can also give your reviews. So that is Notebook LLM. But we don't end there. I do have another one. Next thing, which is Illuminate, again, by Google. So this is something that I feel like people are completely missing out. But this one again, has the similar kind of a thing as with the overview over here that we have in the LLM. But the only difference is something from here. So artificial intelligence index report. Let's take something that's a bit smaller. So let's go to the filter library and say two minutes maybe. Is there anything for two minutes? Maybe there's only this one, like a three minutes. Okay, so let's just go for this one and let's just see view source. So you can see exactly that what that's what they were saying. So you can either give a PDF or you're looking for articles from here. So this one is very much more, much more for serious academicians. Whereas the Notebook LLM, not saying that it's not for serious academicians, it's for mostly everybody who's doing some kind of a research. This one definitely feels like it's more for a serious academician. Now let's see the transcript. So here we have a guest host, guest host, and it's given us uh, this kind of a thing. It's talking about the large language models in code clinical knowledge. And then you press on play. Ready to break down some research? This paper, Large Language Models in Code Clinical Knowledge, explores how well large language models, LLMs, can understand and answer medical questions. It's a pretty relevant topic, especially with the growing interest in AI in healthcare. Oh, absolutely. It's like... so. Here's another thing before uh, we continue. And uh, again, you can actually get this link um, down in the description below because I'm going to have the link to this one in the description below. And also you can also check it yourself. If you're in the academic space or if you're in the space for serious research, this could be something that you would definitely want to look into. The audio, the voices are a little bit different than our voices over uh, here. What's the big deal with quantum computing? What, As opposed to this one. Can these super smart language models like... It's definitely a little bit different, but you can tell me down in the description, uh, down in the comments below, uh, if you think that the voices are different. Now, this is obviously... The ones that power chatbots and write articles. So this is obviously, you get the idea, the, the general idea. And here it is more like a player, as opposed to in this interface, which is very different. You have the sources and you have like a box that comes out. 
but here it's definitely down in the bar kind of like a music player now let's just generate one with the link that i have from this cosmology and astrophysical parameter inference so let's just click here and then i paste the pdf url found this let's put this here and then generate they're also saying that this audio generation should take about 30 seconds. So as opposed to the previous one, which seemed to have taken a long time. And even here, the summary is just a two minute summary as opposed to this 13 minute. And you can just see right over here. If you click on play. This starts. conversation is powered by Google Illuminate. Check out illuminate.google.com for more. Welcome to our discussion. Today, we're diving into a groundbreaking paper titled, You Only Look Once, Unified Real-Time Object Detection. This paper introduces YOLO, a revolutionary approach to object detection. Voice is much more serious and uh, not in a performative way. It's almost like giving a lecture. With that, if you liked this video, do feel free to like it and uh, subscribe if you like the contents here. And with that said, um, you can also check out this video right over here because uh, YouTube says this is a good video. You can also check out this video. This is a nice video as well. And if you want, you can also check this one over here. And until then, I'm going to see you in the next one.